One of the most prominent features of Wagner's operas was his regular use of the leitmotif, repeated phrases often associated with a particular character or idea, which he defined somewhat early in a rather long work and subsequently repeat, signifying and reminding the audience of his initial themes. Wagner was hardly the inventor of the leitmotif, but his use of the technique, particularly in the Ring Cycle, the title of which I will not attempt to pronounce in German, was so prolific as to associate the technique with him indelibly. In this video, I'd like to examine a couple of leitmotifs from Wagner's work. It should be understood that this examination is so far from comprehensive as to be borderline insulting. I imagine a lifetime of study could viably be dedicated to the leitmotifs of the Ring Cycle alone, and indeed this video will not be comprehensive regarding even the two motifs I have selected. Nonetheless, I hope this will serve as a primer on this facet of Wagner's work, and on the musical concept of leitmotif generally. As an aside, while researching this video I found on Wikipedia that Adorno, indeed, that Adorno, is critical of the concept of the leitmotif as associated with Wagner in particular. I may review his book on Wagner at a later date, but suffice it to say I find that the critic in question serves as an effective endorsement of this musical concept. The first leitmotif I'd like to examine is a Dutchman's motif. This motif is not quite the first thing you hear in Wagner's opera The Flying Dutchman. In fact, the overture opens with a massive swell of chord, but it arrives soon after. I recommend that the viewer listen to The Flying Dutchman overture, indeed to the whole opera which I've linked in the description if you have the time. But for the time being, I'll play the motif alone, first as piano, then as horn. Musically, this motif is rather simple, monophonic and consisting of essentially two notes in change. Starting on A and leaping first by a perfect fourth to D, it repeats itself with rhythmic variation once and then leaps by a perfect fifth to A once more. Now this version of the motif I've played here is a version that appears at the very beginning of the Flying Dutchman opera. The very end, with grace notes hitting a semitone above the repeated tonic, is not repeated again in the overture. Indeed, the very next repetition of the motif, arriving moments later, concludes quite differently with a major third interval from D to an F sharp. This F sharp is soon subsumed in the massive F sharp minor chord created by the orchestra, and which I will not attempt to simulate. I again recommend listening to the overture. These two brief lines of music give us an immediate and stark example of the power of leitmotif. The core shared between both instances of the Dutchman's motif is a fourth and a fifth a perfect octave creating a strong, triumphant feeling. The octave core is in each case, however, quickly subverted. In our first example, the grace notes intermittently interrupting the high A serve to add tension to the melody, and in the second example, we move the entire orchestra into a completely different chord after the initial core motif. This initial refusal to allow the Dutchman's motif its logical resolution isn't just a musical curiosity. It's essential to receiving the narrative before a word has been spoken. Recall that these two instances of the Dutchman's motif play in the overture before a singer appears. Wagner wants you to hear the tragedy of the Dutchman's backstory before you meet him, but he also wants you to feel the supernatural might of the Dutchman granted him by his curse. The Dutchman is an intimidating specter of a man. How better to announce him than with a triumphant proclamation with horns, even if the proclamation has been darkened? The Dutchman motif will play many more times over the course of the overture, as of over the course of the whole opera. With a number of variations, it'll be used frequently, as in our second example, to usher in a dramatic change in the mood of the music. Some of the variations played in the overture even resolve without tension, if you can believe it, and almost every repetition of the motif is somewhat different from the last, each brilliantly suited to the musical and narrative moment it finds itself in. The second light motif I've selected to examine for this video is a motif of considerable narrative relevance. It's Siegfried's horn call from the eponymous opera. As before, let us hear it first as piano, and then again as horn. Siegfried's horn call shares as its basis the perfect fifth interval with the Dutchman motif, but as played here it actually resolves, and in any case it has a rather different feel from the Dutchman motif. The rhythm, preserved across key shifts, is decidedly more staccato than the Dutchman motif. The tempo is quicker. And at least in what I consider the definitive form of the horn call, the version played before Siegfried's confrontation with the dragon Fafner, it is built around the tenor high C. Contrasting these two motifs, we have two fantastic examples of the pairing of music and character. I spoke earlier about how the Dutchman's motif is written precisely to evoke his tragic nobility. 
Siegfried's call too perfectly suits this protagonist. It's bright, optimistic, full of energy. The tenor Siegfried is bold and courageous and perhaps even a bit foolish as he charges into the dragon's lair. The first instance of Siegfried's horn call in the opera, however, is not played as Siegfried goes to confront the dragon. It's played in the very first scene, on strings, as Siegfried's presence is announced to the audience. I've linked this first scene in the description. The motif occurs at about eight minutes, and again on the horn at nine minutes. But as before, one simply must listen to the scene as a whole to properly appreciate it. Siegfried's motif and Siegfried himself burst onto the dour scene, soaked in dark, brooding chords in Mima's voice, the timbre of which I can only describe as the operatic equivalent of ranting. Into this darkness is Siegfried announced by his motif, and in he comes, operatically chortling. I've intentionally avoided describing what exactly in narrative terms is happening in the scene. If you take my advice and listen to the first scene as I've linked it, you will likely have little conception of what, what's actually going on here unless you speak German and are quite good at deciphering the exaggerated pronunciation of opera syllables. While this is not necessarily ideal for listening to Wagner, he created his works for an audience that would, in fact, understand them, watch them live, see the full production, and so on, it's nonetheless notable how effective this scene is at conveying first the curmudgeonly energy of Mima alone, and then quite quickly the chaotic enthusiasm of Siegfried's arrival. The horn call motif is core to this transformation, and after this scene, its, its association with Siegfried's fundamental character becomes quite inescapable. As with the Dutchman motif, it will be used throughout the opera to evoke this character, and a transformation, almost a fulfillment, of Siegfried's horn call appears in Gotterdammerung, the last of the ring cycle. As I said previously, there is an almost limitless study that can be done in the use of leitmotif in Wagner's work. This video is simply my attempt to explore the technique in a touch more depth, either to introduce it to those entirely unfamiliar with the theoretical interiorant of Wagner, or to highlight it for the passingly familiar. I do apologize if I've stated anything here incorrectly particularly for the experts. Inconsistencies across available performances or minor deviations from, from accessible sheet music require an examination done largely by ear, which therefore may not always be perfectly accurate and may well be inconsistent with the recorded performances some may prefer. Nonetheless, I believe the crux of my examination here to be largely correct. I intend to do more videos like this, both on various aspects of Wagner's life and work and on music theory specifically. If you enjoyed this video, do like and subscribe for more and let me know of any topics you might like to see for this sort of examination. Auf Wiedersehen für now.